Okay, test, test, checking. All right, good. All right, today, the last chapter I want to cover is talking about content. And the content actually is not the hardest part of your presentation. The hardest part is your beginning, getting people interested, getting people to not fall asleep, getting people to feel, hey, this is something for me, this is something I'm excited about, something I like. Content actually is a little bit easier, but the danger of content is it becomes boring, right? And as you saw in your presentations, like your presentation on the finance of the company, your introduction to the company is not easy to stop from being boring. It's a little bit hard. So here are some of the things we can talk about when we talk about uh, content. Of course, we start off with a good impression and a nice, clear uh, main point. These are, of course, the things that we need to watch out for. You've already done your outlines. I think you do a pretty good job on the outlines. We've gotten them down to be very, very clear and basic outlines, especially for a five-minute presentation. Now, each part of your presentation and the content, if you have part one, part two, part three, you need to be sure to make each part very, very clear. This is part two. This is part three. This is the last part. This is my final point. Okay? I think if you have a group with like three people, like our Starbucks group, actually this is very good for you because each person can come in for a new part. So that's a good way to signal a new part, a new section. I think in uh, San's example, you switch. You say, okay, now talk about the the show, okay, come back, okay, tell me, how do I get there, how do I do that, right? If you're one person alone, like Amazon, it's much harder to do that. You need to signal, next, now I want to show you part two, the final part. So by doing this, introduce the parts, you help to keep the audience interested in the flow of your presentation. It's kind of a key way to do that. Being a bit informal is okay. And this is one thing that seems very hard for you guys. Before your presentation begins, you seem so relaxed. But then when your presentation begins, you are suddenly so not relaxed. And in the presentation, actually being a little bit informal is okay. And I'm going to tell you something that's very interesting. And that is in... Um, in Starbucks presentation. Now, I'm very angry with you people for not using a real product. But, <laughs> but in Starbucks presentation, they did something very interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll show you soon. And that is, everybody, to, everybody yesterday, you were much better moving around. Moving. That's much, much better than before, not just stuck. And you move in front of the slide is okay. You move back, right? But something very interesting was, Paul kept standing in front of the slide, and Eric kept grabbing <laughs> Paul back. And so I actually liked that a lot because it, it's very, it's informal. It also shows, it shows people, okay, look at the slide now. Okay, don't worry. Okay, look at the slide now. Okay, don't worry. So, and it's fun, and so I actually think that was good. That helped to keep the topic interesting and so it's hard to plan but what I'm saying is be a little bit more relaxed if you make a mistake you can use the mistake as a way to signal people it's okay relax pay attention and that was a good example of that actually well done state the main point within 30 seconds I keep saying that I know everybody thinks that I'm so boring I keep saying it there's nothing more important than the main point. It really helps your audience focus. Make sure the main topic is short, simple, easy to understand. Now, in your presentation, you have your main topic, your main point, which our last one was the new, pro the new product, right? But then you may have sub-points, point one, two, and three, or part one and two. These also need a main topic, a main point. You need to quickly say, now I'm going to talk about the health benefit. Now I'm going to talk about the monitoring your health benefit. Now I'm going to talk about the streaming app. Now I'm going to talk about how to make a profit by writing stories for Amazon. 
So each one has its own main topic. Whoops. If, if you do not do this quickly and clearly, the audience will be confused and they'll become bored, especially today. Today is much worse than before because today people pull out their smartphone, people have their tablet, and they just ignore you. So you've got to keep their attention from the very, very beginning. And each part, each section is another chance to keep them interested again, right? Let's look at this idea of introductions. Here are some introduction examples. Let me show you what we're talking about here. In this section, I will cover the history of the company, which you may know goes back over 100 years. That's a nice little section. This is not the whole topic. This is one section, one part of my presentation introduction topic sentence. This part of my talk covers the most important asset of our company, the employees. Remember we saw this in the video, right? This part is about employees. Research, research results, that's my results section, are of course the most important part of my presentation which I will describe now. Now. So research results now. Our plans for the future are what I'm most proud of and I'm happy to share them with you now. So now is the next part of this presentation. I was very impressed with the service of this company and that is what I want to describe in this section now. This section I'm going to show you now. So these are all main topics for the sections, right? Okay, we talked a little bit here about the visual aids. I don't think we need to do too much about this. I just covered that. It's very well done. Okay, let's talk about how you do your core information. How do you make that each section, each part really, really clear? Now, in our presentations, I think everyone's doing pretty good, but sometimes this is the part where you get, you slow down, you get confused, you get lost, you begin to get a little bit bored, and the audience is like, huh, what's he talking about now? I don't follow. So what can we do to help make the core information more interesting to the audience? Each part has to have some information. We can't help it. That's the way a presentation is. You can't stop it. You can't, like if I'm doing a research presentation, I have to talk about the, I have to talk about the data collection, the sample size, the t-test, the, the alpha value. These are very boring, right? Nobody really wants to listen to this stuff, but I have to talk about it. So how do I do that? Well. Some things you do that are very bad, the worst thing you can do is read the presentation. This is what most people do. Most people read the presentation. They just sit there and blah, 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 blah. It's very normal everywhere, especially in Taiwan. People like to read their presentations. Now, uh, let me get back over here again. There we go. People can listen faster than they can uh, speak. What does this mean? I don't know if you've ever done this before, but have you ever um, taken your, I guess, iPod, yeah, iPod can do it. If you have an iPod, you can increase the speed of the voice. No? Yeah, iPod can do it. Yes, 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 yes. You have to go in and it will say like 1.5 times, two, 2 times, 3, three times is pretty fast. 2.5 times. You can do it in Windows Media Player. You can increase the speed. Did you not know this? No. <laughs> now, when you increase the speed, what happens is the voice changes the tone and it becomes very, and you can't understand it. But if you use your iPod or Windows Media Player, it will change the tone so you can still understand it, only it's very, very fast talking. Yeah. So you can try this. You can test this. And what you can do is you can find out that people can listen faster than they can talk. So it's very normal in, in, for university students, they will record a lecture or they'll ask someone, help me record the lecture. Maybe the lecture takes three hours, but then I take the recording and I listen to it at 2x so I can finish the lecture in 1.5 hours. 
and you remember more. Because lots of the lecture, the teacher's just like, ah, mm, da, da, na, na, not saying anything. So when you increase the speed, the professor's talking much faster and you can understand more, even though he's talking faster, because you can listen faster than he can talk. <laughs> right? This is true. The problem for presentation is because people can listen faster than you can talk, when you're talking, they think you're talking so slow and they're easy to become distracted. So when you listen to the recording very quickly, your brain will focus. But when you listen to someone talk, it's very easy to... I mean, didn't that, doesn't that happen to you? Didn't you ever listen to someone talk and you're like, huh, what did you say? <laughs> Even though they're like talking right to you? <laughs> it happens all the time, right? So you're talking and you're like, huh? And what? What did you say? I was kind of listening. I was listening, but I totally did not hear what you just said. Right? That happens all the time. And in a presentation, that's the number one problem in the content section. At the beginning, people are going to listen because they want to give you a chance. They want to say, what is this? At the end, maybe it's already too late and they don't care. Or they're listening they want to hear, okay, tell me more. What's the end? Right? But in the middle is the hard part. How do I keep them interested in that middle part? That's not easy. You cannot talk faster, because if you talk faster, you're going to just get mixed up. So you can't, you can't talk faster. That's not going to help very much. What can you do? Let's look at some ideas here. People can easily daydream. They get distracted. They use their cell phone today. Maybe they just begin dreaming, or <laughs> maybe they just fall asleep. People prefer the opportunity an appearance of interaction. So this is the key point, interaction. So if, if I'm listening to you talk and I think you're asking me a question, are you okay today? Is everything okay? Would you like to publish a story? Would you like to watch movies on your cell phone? Would you like to drink coffee that makes you healthier? If I make you feel that I'm really asking you, talking to you, involving you, then your audience will pay more attention. But if you're just talking, talking, A, B, C, D, then it's very hard for humans to focus. Very, very hard. Your students, everybody knows this, the students. When I, when I went to university, we even had uh, lessons to teach us the special things to do. For example, when you're in class listening to a lecture, you should not move your feet. Because if you move your feet, it means your brain is not focused and you're, you're going you're gonna to like daydream. So moving your feet, like moving around in your chair, and they just focus. And the other thing is, when a teacher is talking, every sentence he says, repeat it inside your brain. Just repeat it. So he says something like, the alpha value here is not significant, and you say the alpha value is not significant. Because you can listen two times faster than he can talk. So if you repeat what he says, that's just about right, that you won't fall asleep. Right? Do you do that? Do you focus in class, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> I know Paul never sleep in my class. I watch him carefully. <laughs> so how do we do this when we present? It's not easy, right? But we've got to try to keep them involved try to do that. Now, some people in Taiwan is very normal. I, not just Taiwan everywhere, but especially in Taiwan. Whenever you go give a presentation, they say, what do they say? They say, give me your handout. Give me your PowerPoint. And there's a problem with that. If you give the audience your PowerPoint, what will they do? They will quickly look and then it's done. <laughs> right? They'll just page through it, and then all the things you want to show, they already saw, and now they don't care. So in the presentation, you kind of need to show more than you have in the handout. So usually the handout will just be some main points, maybe. But then your slides will be much more interesting and detailed, and your talk will be more detailed. But if you give them exactly what you're going to say, then it doesn't really help. That's one other reason I like the slides to stay simple. So if they get the slides, they really still don't know much. It's just the main points. 
So they want to listen to you to understand more. So they, they see, oh, this is an interesting point, but I don't know anything more. And then they listen to you. But if your slides have everything, then they just read this and they're done. So it's very distracting. So we try to make sure your presentation has more, more information than the slides. It is during the content section that the presenter must speak clearly and slowly, making each point easy to understand. Now, I just told you people are easy to get distracted. People listen quickly, but you speak slowly. So should you speak faster? And the answer is no, you should not speak faster. In fact, you should probably speak a little bit slower. Because when you speak slower, people feel you have something very important <laughs> to say. You see? Of course, if your whole presentation is so slow, people will not pay attention. But sometimes you get faster, and then sometimes you slow down to make it sound more important. Isn't that fun? That would be really good. Wouldn't everybody like that? You see, then you speed up. So you slow down, you speed up. Slow down, speed up. And this actually makes people pay more attention. They think you have something interesting to say. The audience will stay interested if you make sure the slide design is interesting and clear too. Your slides are quite good lately. I'm very satisfied with that. <coughs> Keep interest. One point per slide. This happens all the time. I'm watching students present their research and one slide has so much information. It's just like, oh, I have no idea what they're talking about. And maybe you've seen it. Sometimes professors will ask, like, can you, can you go back? Go back to that slide? What, what is that? Because it's too much. Just one main point per slide is very helpful to this. Try to have one slide for every one minute of your presentation. So you guys have five minute presentations. About five slides is about right. And I think that's about what you have. You guys with the coffee thing, what was the five, four, three, two, one? It's a little bit crazy. I, I was pushing the button trying to keep up with you. <laughs> uh, I'm like, huh, one, five, four, three, two, one. Then, so that's a little bit crazy. But in general, I think everyone's done a good job. Now, some topics you may need a little bit more. I think in the Amazon case, you had more. How many slides did you have total? Do you remember? Yeah, you had more. So why more? I think you had more because the point you were making is a little bit more complicated, a little bit harder to understand. But also, you, were, you, were, you had your slides very much in sync with what you were saying. Would you like to know what happened to Harry Potter? Would you like to know from the new moon thing? Would you like, would you like? So that was kind of like you were doing with the slides what they were doing with their partners. You were using the slides like your other speaker. So that's OK. In, in your case, though, you don't have just one speaker. You have two, three speakers. You know, five or six slides is enough. I think, how many, how many did, did Apple did you have? <coughs> Eight slides. Yeah, so I think that's about right. Okay, how many did you have in your CSI? 47. 47? No, oh, okay. <laughs> right, right. You have to have the opening slide, you have the ending slide, so they don't really count. So, you know, seven, eight, once you get past ten for five minutes, it's getting to be kind of a lot, unless you have a special reason for that. Okay, good. Okay, practice your introductions. I really think the introductions are the most important part for your sections, each section. You need to practice those. Why? Because they get your attention. Firstly, Firstly, it's really strong. Firstly, right? Firstly, I'd like to start with. Firstly, let me draw your attention to. Firstly, the topics I would like to cover today. You see, very, very strong on the emphasis. There are two main issues. Now, most of the groups are doing pretty good. There are three main issues. It's okay to use the body language. It looks funny when you watch the video, but it really helps people to fall. It really helps. I mean, you have to think. These people, they don't know anything you're talking about. When you do this, it helps them, and they like it. Uh, big deal. 
There are three main issues. There are four main issues I want to cover in this section, this next section. The history of this topic goes back so many years, so let me show you. The history of this topic began 10 years ago, so let me show you. So you see, this is telling me, what are we going to talk about next? History. I'm very, very clear on that. Everyone probably knows, and then here's my next section. Everybody probably has heard of the new coffee. Everybody has probably heard, or everyone has probably had some experience with reading some fan fiction. Let me show you how you can publish it now, this section. With many possible causes, I would like to start with, this is my beginning, I would like to focus on, I would like to center on, I would like to draw your attention to, these are really good ones, draw your attention to my next section. Okay. With increasing competition, we are confronted with, with my next section. You see? So I use a sentence to tell you the topic, and that's my next section. With increasing competition, we must look into we must look into increasing our sales efforts. We must look into lowering our price. We must look into increasing our productivity. Let me show you how. You see? This topic is on everyone's mind lately. This topic is not only talked about, but is still important. This topic, this topic is what? My topic now. I want to show you this section now, this new topic. Okay? I think this example here in Amazon, you are doing this a lot. Did you want to do this? Did you want to learn about this? Did you want to see how you do this? This is how you do it. This is how you make the money. This is how you publish the fan fiction. I like that. Our approach. Let me tell you about my next section. It's our approach. Our approach centers on two key points. Our approach is very similar to IBM's approach. Our approach can be summarized as cost cutting. This is what we're doing. So again, let me introduce the next section. Very good. To begin, now here you say to begin, but this does not mean begin your whole presentation. This means this section. So you can use this at the beginning of a section. To begin, I would like to quickly review some basic points. To begin, I would like to go over the previous work in this area. To begin, let me remind everyone of something. So I'm beginning a new section. Very helpful. This part of my presentation, this part of my presentation, right? So I, I know this is not really our English, English class, but let me just give you some points, right? So this part of my presentation, because part, why part? Because it's this section. I'm trying to wake you up. This part. Right? This next part of my presentation, right? So this is a great way to keep people's interest, and you emphasize it in the English. Before going into detail, we need to review another part. Before going into detail, we need to first explain. Before I finish my presentation, let me show you one more thing. You see? Right? So it's letting you know this is the next part. Wake up, pay attention to the next part. Okay, and then, of course, you need to match your words with your slides, which is a very common thing. I think everybody's pretty good in this one, except Apple forgot your last slide, didn't match anything. I had to move, I was like watching it, I was like, hmm. So I moved your slide forward for you. But everybody did a quite a good job on this thing. It's not bad. You need to match your slide. now. When we watch the videos today, I do like that everyone interacting with the slide. I know it's not easy because we got the green screen. You can't really see anything. And you're all like watching. Then you're like, hmm, what's happening? <laughs> it's OK. You can come and practice a little bit early. But that's really, really effective to match up your talk with your slides. OK, transition. Same kind of idea, only a little bit more detailed, right? A transition is when you move from one part to another part. 
in your thesis writing, the transition is when you write one paragraph and you have another paragraph and another paragraph and another paragraph. Every paragraph at the end needs to have a transition to the next paragraph. That's good writing. It's not easy to do. It's easy to forget. Lots of people just cut one paragraph, begin the next one, begin another one, begin another one. But you need to have a transition. That's the best way. In a presentation, it's even more important to have a transition because it helps people follow you in your presentation. How do you do transitions uh, in your presentation? One thing is you signal them. How do you signal them? Things like this. That concludes. That concludes our review of the company. I just said something. That concludes. That's over. Next. That concludes the review of our company history. Now let me show you the next part, which is our company's future. You see? So this ends one, and then you begin another one. I've covered most of the important points concerning the firm's product line. I've covered. That means done. I've finished. I've shown you. I've talked about the most important points. Done. Now I'm going to do something new. The literature review includes more than I have time to cover now. But that includes the most important points. That includes that. I just finished that. Now I'm going to go next subject. That's over. Next. Okay. These are signals of transitions. This is a very common one. From these results, it is clear the company is in a strong financial position to face future challenges. I just told you the results. From those results, from that, from that information, you can see everything's good. Now let me talk about the next subject. You see? So that's the transition. So every part, just like in your thesis writing, you have a main topic and then subtopics. And then every paragraph, a beginning and a transition, a beginning and a transition, a beginning and a transition. With this foundation in place, we have a strong base from which to launch the new product line. So I just told you about the foundation. Next, I want to talk about the new product. Lead the audience step by step through your transitions. That's kind of a key idea. Your presentations are only five minutes, but you need to lead the audience step by step. You need to introduce your ordering, your sequencing, and your transitioning like this. Secondly, right? It's very normal. Firstly, secondly, thirdly, lastly, secondly, financial results also support this basic premise. Next, 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 the literature informed our research design. Listen to, listen to the way I say this. I know it sounds strange, but it's very normal. Next, the literature informed our research design. You see, this is low, this is high tone. Next, the literature informed, I'm just telling you, wake up, hello, next. You see, that's what I'm doing to the audience. We can, see, <laughs> we can see from these previous success. We can see. We can see from these previous successes, this company has an advantage in any future product offering. So I begin strong. We can see blah, 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 blah. So, oh, we can see what, what, what. These findings lead to our recommendations. These findings lead to our recommendations. That's a signal of a transition coming. Here are some more similar. Response rates were sufficient. Therefore, therefore, see right in the middle of the sentence. Response rates were sufficient. Therefore, we began the analysis of our data. Our sample size was sufficient. Therefore, we analyzed our data, right? Results support our hypothesis, therefore, we moved on to the confirmatory factor analysis. Market response has been strong. So, so, we now propose the complete product line. So, you see, right in the middle of the sentence. 
Okay, get a few more here. As a result, consequently, therefore, because of this, or because, <coughs> right? You want me to give you a little bit of practice here? As a result, as a result, we can now look at the proposal too. So again, emphasis. As a result, we can now do something. Sequencing, here's some more examples. First, second, third. I think it's very common, very normal. Everybody knows this. But the way you say it must be very strong. First, blah, blah, blah. Second, something, something. Third, lastly, to start with. I like this one. To start with, let me show you today. To start with, next, then, finally. So a good presentation has lots of these. Lots of these. Okay? All right? While, as, when, after. While we develop the new product line, after we develop the new product line, when we develop the new product line, as we develop the new product line, these kinds of words help the audience to feel there's like a time. I did something, I'm doing something, I will do something. Okay? So you get that time feeling. I think it's very important. Okay? During this period, at this time, meanwhile, meanwhile is a good one. It's not so easy to use, but it's a good one. Meanwhile, meanwhile, competition was attempting to enter our new market. Meanwhile, it's signaling we're moving on to another topic, another paragraph. Here are some good ones. Afterwards, afterwards, we developed our plan including our new sales price. Afterwards, after that, after that, we developed our new plan to execute a new design. Let me tell you about the new design. Then, it's very normal, right? But you emphasize it. Then, we moved on to creating a new product. Following that, we designed a new channel to ship our product in. After that, uh, at that point, at that point, we knew we needed to collect more data. So we collected more data. Let me tell you about more data. Okay. So I think in your presentations, everyone can add more of these. Here are some causes. As a result, something made something happen. As a result. As a result. Now, like uh, Starbucks, you could use a lot of these. As a result of drinking this new coffee, right? As a result of drinking this new coffee, uh, uh, Laura, Laura increased her health, right? As a result, that's what you were trying to say. That's why we created. Okay, people people love to drink coffee, but it's not always healthy. That's why we created. You see. A plus B equals C, right? X plus Y equals C, that kind of thing. X plus Y equals Z. Contrast. Contrast is a good... Do you guys want to turn that a little so you can see it? Is it not clear? Yeah. Go ahead, turn the TV towards you. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We need to get bigger TVs in here someday. Okay. Contrasting. Here are some good tra contrasting words. Nevertheless, nevertheless, in English is a very strange word, isn't it? It's three words together, but it's spelled like one word, right? Nevertheless, nevertheless, it's a fun word. You want to say it with me? Nevertheless, nevertheless, nevertheless. 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 Ah, good, Eric. <laughs> nevertheless. <laughs> That's the way you say it. You say it very quickly all together, just one word very quickly. What does it mean? It means never the <laughs> less, right? 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 It's like the three words are stuck together. It's a great, it's a great contrasting word. Nevertheless, you know, we lost money. Nevertheless, this quarter we expect to make a profit, right? Nevertheless, nevertheless, we have not rested on these positive results and intend to continue product improvement for our customers. Nevertheless. So this kind of word is really helpful to keep, um, 
to keep people interested. Very, very helpful. However, however, the company's new marketing strategy will turn profits around. However, however is a great little phrase. However, but you've got to say it the right way to get attention. However, 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 yeah, and it signals, it signals the audience to pick up and pay attention. Let's look at some comparing words. Similarly, this word is harder for you, I think. Similarly. Similarly. Oh, hey, Eric, that's quite good. <laughs> Similarly. Similarly. Now, the problem with this word is, I think, it's hard to say, and when you feel pressure, you're going to say it wrong, right? Because it's like, seven <laughs> says, it's very hard to say. Anyway, it's a great English word. Similarly, future operations should prove profitable. It's a very positive word, too. Okay, get another one here. In the same way, this is much easier, right? Same idea, exactly the same idea. In the same way, we develop the second study's variables. In the same way, in the same <coughs> way, it's a good one. Okay, let's do some emphasizing. This is where you really could help your presentations. In your presentations, in your content, you begin to slow down. You begin to get tired. You need to signal more transition. You need to signal more next. And you need to emphasize more. Some things are very important, and some things are not so important. Some things are really important. You need to emphasize. How can we emphasize? Here are some ways we can emphasize. In fact, in fact, Previous studies rarely address the issues we defined in our research. Where's the emphasis? In fact. In fact. In fact. Because it's telling you, pay attention. This is a fact. I want to show you a fact. In fact. In fact. Right? In fact, this coffee will make you live longer. Make you feel more. I don't know. I don't think Paul can be more beautiful. <laughs> Paul's already beautiful. <laughs> more beautiful. <laughs> Here's another one. This is a good one. Actually, 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 these preliminary results led us to a new research design. Actually, so actually is the same kind of idea. It's like, let me tell you, this is key, key idea, key point. Actually, Actually, it's a strange word in English to say, but that's the way you say it. Actually, actually, actually yes, because it actually, okay, very good. Here's another way. This is much more straightforward, very simple, same idea. I want to emphasize. I want to <coughs> emphasize. I want to emphasize. It's the same thing as saying actually or in fact, right? It's the same thing, only you just say it out. I want to emphasize this next point. I want to emphasize just how useful this product is. Here's another one. It's very easy. Most importantly. Most importantly, right? Most importantly. We must remember, right, most importantly. Now, usually these emphasizing words can also go with your body language, right? So you would say, in fact, in fact, in fact, <laughs> right, 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 right? Or, or sometimes if somebody has something like this, they have glasses, they always like to do this, right? If you have glasses, you'll say something like, you'll say something like, you'll go like, blah, 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 blah. And most importantly, <laughs> right, 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 and most importantly, right, okay, so these are really great ones. And the good thing is, why do you use these? Because the content of your presentation is a little bit boring. You can't help it. It's always going to be a little bit boring. Now we get to the end of each section. So at the end of each section, we need to signal a kind of summary. We're going to summarize. 
How do we summarize? We also need to tell people beforehand. I'm going to tell you this is the end of this section. Part one, almost over. Let me tell you. To sum up, to sum up, consumer testing has given us confidence in our new product plans. To sum up, in brief, in brief, in brief means same thing, to sum up. It just means let me tell you the main point I just finished. Let me just quickly tell you again. In brief, in brief, production costs have risen so much we are now looking for new manufacturing sources. In short, same, the exact same thing as in brief, but it's a great signal, right? You would not want, if, you, if your presentation had one, two, three sections, you would not want to in every section say, in brief, and then in brief, and then in brief. <laughs> but you could say, in section one, you could say, to sum up, and in section two, you could say, in brief, and then in section three, you could say, in short. Totally fine. Makes sense. It keeps people very, very interested. Okay? Sign of a good presentation. In other words, now this one we always see this in writing. Now, I do want to point out to you, in your writing, in your thesis writing, in other words, is a very bad thing to say. Very bad. Because why do you need to say, in other words, just say what you want to say <laughs> clearly. You do not need to say something unclear, and then you say, in other words, clearly, right? You just say the main point clearly once, right? Never write in other words. Although lots of people like to. It's silly, right? But in speaking, it's quite good. Because it's not really in other words. You're just telling people, hello, wake up. I just want to tell you I'm coming to the end of a section. So I just want to make my point one more time. In other words, Combining our sales efforts will lead to higher efficiency. So very quickly over this. In other words, in other words, it has a kind of flow to it, right? In other words, in other words, okay. Causes, uh, this is like something leads to something, right? because of this, due to that, since that. I'm just going to quickly go over these. You can use them yourself. This is in our book. Because of, due to, these factors can lead to, cause something, result in something. This kind of stuff is really good because it tells the listener A and B does C, X and Y does Z, like that. And then we have contrasting, right? Contrasting, summarizing which we just did, and concluding. So all of these are inside of your book. You can go over them. Let me quickly cover conclusion. In conclusion, in conclusion, this company's share price has been held up even during slow economic times and will support new expansion efforts. In conclusion, in conclusion. You emphasize, you emphasize the in. In conclusion. Right, in conclusion. <laughs> it's not easy. To conclude. To, to conclude. conclude. And then you give the conclusion, right? Then you give the conclusion. I now come to the conclusion. I now come to the conclusion. And everybody says, ah, oh, okay, conclusion, good. <laughs> right? That's what happens. Everybody gets happy about that. Okay. And then over here, these four points can only lead to one conclusion. These four points can only lead to one conclusion. You see, now I like this one. Why? Because this one is like kind of flow, right? These four points can only lead to one conclusion. Now I tell you. Let me tell you the conclusion. Just one conclusion. Highlighting, making some points more important, making them sound big. In particular, in particular, this is like something's important, in particular. Our SWOT analysis leads us to a new marketing strategy. Key point, 
in particular. This review is especially important. Especially important. Especially. Right. And it's quite okay in English to make these words emphasize out. Especially. It's another one. Let me emphasize. Let me emphasize. Only a small number of our customers have a problem with this product. You see, all the other words go down. Emphasize goes up in tone. Okay. Digressing. Now, we're almost done. What is digressing? Digressing means you tell something else. Last week we talked about this a little bit. Sometimes you're talking in the content, in the body of your presentation, and blah, 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 a little bit boring. So what do you do? You want to get their interest. How do you get their interest? Maybe say something different. Maybe say something else. Maybe say something not exactly the same. That's called digressing. How do we digress? In English, you can begin by saying, by the way, by the way, by the way. By the way, you may have seen a story in the, in the newspaper last week about our new product line. By the way, did you know that our new product line is very successful? By the way, did you know that 10 companies are already copying our product? <laughs> and then you come back to your main presentation. By the way, just something else. Let me show you. Another word you can use, another phrase you can use is in passing. In passing. So here, in passing, I just want to emphasize how effective our approach has been. In passing. Here is giving a, so that's called digressing, right? Go off and then come back. Now, let's talk about giving examples. Of course, the easiest way to do this in English is you just say, for example, right? For example. For example. For example. For example, six previous studies have come to the same conclusion. For example, right? You must use it at the beginning of the sentence, of course. For instance. For instance. For instance. Exact same thing as for example. For instance. Now let's talk about generalizing. Generalizing, it's another, it's, another, it's another phrase to get people to the next point. Usually, usually, usually. Generally. generally, as a rule. That means usually, <laughs> right? <laughs> usually. So these are great introductory words and phrases to get people to follow you. Most often, most, most often. often. Okay, those are really good ones. All right, now in our book we have some more practices. You can use those to get ready for your presentations. I won't <coughs> read them all since we've got to get moving. And the last thing we want to cover today is the body language, right? So actually in your presentations, your body language has been surprisingly good. Let's just quickly then go over what are some key points to pay attention. Of course, you don't want to be too stiff. At the same time, you don't want to be going a little bit too crazy. So you want to be somewhere. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> you want to be. Actually, Paul's not too crazy. Paul's very reserved. <laughs> okay, now, some of the points are very easy to understand. Why is body language important? Body language is important because when we give a presentation to an international audience, your language, your native language may not be English, and their native language may not be English, right? So nobody's a native English speaker, which makes it a little bit hard. So even if your English is good, that doesn't mean their English is good, right? So you use body language to help people understand my point one, my point two. Right? <laughs> Follow me, you know, main point. And body language really, really helps that. This is a nonverbal communication. It also helps you to make your points very clear. So how do you do this? The best way to do it is to practice. Practice. How do you practice it? Well, 
one thing you can do is you can watch your video like I'm going to put your video up on the web this week you can download your video or you can make a video of yourself and you watch your video and what you do is you play the video fast not at the normal speed but you play the video fast forward and when you play it fast you don't hear any sound because it's too fast and you just watch the people's bodies moving around and by wa by watching you can see if the body language is good or not good if it's good you can say oh that's a main point there oh this is a transition oh the end is coming soon you can see from the body language the flow of the presentation even though you don't hear any words it's very unusual it's very strange it's very amazing but it really really works right so that's one way you can do it another thing you can do is just video yourself and then watch yourself right watch yourself fast and then watch yourself normal and then practice because body language is it's not easy because you need to talk and move at the same time and that is not easy to do the best way is to practice it a couple times and to use video to give you that uh, feedback the wrong body language can confuse people and that's very very troublesome right okay so this range we don't want to be too relaxed we don't want to be too expressive we want to be somewhere in the middle okay I think everybody understands that okay other body language includes things like your facial expressions and your eye contact so of course you want to make sure you make eye contact I think everyone here has actually done a very good job of that so not a big deal for us you all do good if you're in a big audience you need to make sure you contact everyone one problem is one problem is if you make a presentation sometimes in the audience you will see someone that person is like listening very carefully and he's, mm. he's like very interested in your topic and so when you're talking what do you do you kind of focus on that person you know this is very normal usually in audience there's at least one person very interested and you focus but then later you go and talk to the person and say hi I saw you were interested and he said I know speak English <laughs> <laughs> right? Or I, I don't understand anything you say. He's just a nice person, just going like this all the time, you see? Right? So you need to be careful. When you give a presentation, make sure you send your signals to everyone because the people who look like they're listening, maybe they're not listening, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Or different cultures have different ways, right? Yeah. For, for uh, Indian culture, this means no, right? And this means yes. So if somebody's in like this, it means they're confused maybe, right? Right? If they're doing this, they're listening to you, right? Right? Yeah. Eric? Good idea, right? <laughs> good. I'm glad you agree with me. Okay. So facial expressions, very key point. All right. Now, the part that I think is so hard for everybody is this getting relaxed. I know it's hard. And I think when we watch our videos we'll see that it's the part I enjoy the most when people start to relax a little bit and aren't so um, working on your memorization it's, it's not easy so relaxing your face having some fun in your presentation can really make a big difference um, you especially want to be careful about distracting expressions I think actually everybody does pretty good here. It's just you're always so uptight, always so nervous. Of course, you don't want to be negative. You don't want to be annoyed, unfriendly, unhappy. Lots of people give presentations this way. It's very normal. They, they act like they're not happy at all. And it's very distracting, very hard to listen to. Okay? Lots of people avoid eye contact. That's very normal because they don't practice enough or they're shy or they just don't they just it's just not normal for them to have eye contact some cultures it's not good to have eye contact okay the problem here is when you watch someone give a presentation if they don't do this you notice but when you do it you don't notice in other words it's easy to see someone do this but it's not easy to see you do it you see what I mean so I could be talking to you and I don't make eye contact and just and then later you say hey professor Warden, you never make eye contact I say oh yeah I did 
<laughs> I looked at you, you see. So, right? so how, to, how to do that is not easy. Make a video or ask your friends to give you feedback. And of course, our biggest problem in our class is this nervousness. Everyone gets very nervous, uh, even to the point, especially at the beginning, that kind of nervousness really makes, takes away from the focus, the attention of the presentation. So being relaxed, being friendly, feeling confident is the best uh, body language and facial expression you can give. Don't look away, don't be bored, don't look like you're not having fun. You need to look like you're having fun. I think the best example of that was the video we watched with, with Gayoff, remember? He came in to make the presentation, he was all like this, like this, like that, he's like that. And the other one, he came in, he's just like, hi, happy to see you, it's so great, you know. He was, the things he said were not so perfect, they were not so great. He made mistakes, but he felt relaxed. Everybody just felt relaxed. They were happy to follow him. Hand gestures and other body language can really help you to move forward, okay? So the hands. How do you use the hands? You want to be careful, right? You don't want to use your hands for everything, right? Yeah? And then the next step, we want up in profit before we experience a drop in the quality. This gets very confusing, right? But every few sentences using the hands to emphasize up, down, important, steady, number one, number two, this can be very, very helpful. Extreme gestures can be very distracting. So again, somewhere in between. You don't want to be too extreme. Okay, let me uh, move through here. Another one was the podium. We don't have a podium here, do we? I can put a podium in our video, but I thought it's a little bit strange, like uh, the thing you stand at, the desk, right? Usually if you give a presentation and you stand behind the desk, it's not as interesting as if you move out of the desk. Now sometimes if you go to give a conference presentation, you must stand behind the desk. That's where the microphone is. If you don't stand there, no one can hear you. But if you can move, that's good too. Or sometimes some people will stand next to the podium, next to the desk, and turn the microphone to use it there. That's okay too. Anything that can help people see you more is good. And in today's video, we'll see everybody was moving over to the slide. It's much, much more interesting than the previous videos. I thought it was much more interesting, actually. Walking around the room, speaking, moving back and forth, this all helps the audience to stay interested. Also, sometimes you can move forward. Now, the problem here is because we're shooting the video in the room, the camera needs to stay focused. So I was a little bit nervous. When you were presenting, you move forward a lot. You like to move forward. And that's a good sign. That means I'm friendly to my audience. I want to know my audience. The problem here is we don't have a lot of space. And if you move too far, you'll be out of focus. <laughs> and you'll become unclear. I think yours turned out OK, though. But moving forward tells the audience, I like you. I want to talk to you. And then you move back. Maybe you come forward and you say, I want to make an important point. Let me show you why this is important. Then you move back, right? So that moving forward can be helpful. In this room, we can't go too far, though. We can only go so far. Okay. This can also lead to a good opportunity for body language to be more clear, right? So you get more clear. All right, this is the same idea. I'm going to wrap this up. We're getting a little bit long here. I still want to watch the videos. Try to have a good posture. Try to look good. I think everybody understands that. How do you overcome your nervousness? You're going to have to practice. Now, I think your practice is you're trying to memorize what you're saying. Of course, that's important to memorize because otherwise you don't know what to say. But I suggest maybe you use some cards to have your main points. Don't memorize so clearly, but rather practice more about relaxing. Maybe every time you practice, you say your, your speech a little bit different. You say your presentation a little bit different. That's okay. There's not one way, but you relax. You see, this is the problem everybody has, relaxing. How do you learn to relax? Practice in front of a mirror. Don't, don't you, didn't you ever take dance lessons before, dancing? Did anybody study dancing before? Study, don't you need to have a mirror? Right. If you don't have a mirror, you cannot learn because you've got to see. 
Even so, like, if somebody tells you, straighten your leg, you're like, my leg is straight. <laughs> no, no, it's not straight. And you go, it's straight. You're going to need to see the mirror to see if your leg is not straight. So same with presentation. If you have a mirror and you can practice in it, I know it sounds strange, but it really does help you to get better. I know it's weird. A big mirror, not a little tiny mirror. <laughs> a big mirror, not a little tiny one. Like in here is good. You come here, you watch yourself, it's actually really help you a lot. Okay, so we're gonna go jump over that. I think that's pretty clear. And of course, you can use video camera. I think video is the best way. Now, when you watch yourself on video, don't you feel a little bit strange when you see yourself? Don't you think that's not really me? Right? That doesn't, does that sound like me? That's not really me, <coughs> right? So, you need to learn when you watch yourself on video, don't think of that's me. Think of that is some person giving a presentation. What can that person do to be better? I'm the audience, that person is presenting. How can I be better? How can that person be better? Don't worry, oh, that's not like me, that doesn't sound good, I don't look good. <laughs> you need to like detach from it. You need to become more objectified. Okay, that's what I like the most. We have video camera that you can borrow. I think somebody already borrowed our video camera, right? Very nice video camera department. You can borrow that, put it on a tripod, and you can record about that. You can also practice in front of your friends or um, in front of your family members to help you. Although, I don't think they have much patience. My family would never practice with me. Not enough patience. Okay, facial expressions. Stay friendly when you need to. Sometimes you need to be serious. You need to make sure your facial expressions match your topic, right? You don't want to say things like, you don't want to say, and this year, we lost a million dollars. <laughs> right? You got to make your face ex match the content. And I think that's not all, it sounds easy, but it's not actually very easy. So negative, look negative. Positive, look positive. Thinking, look thinking, right? These are all good ways. All right, the body language, we've kind of covered this. You need to start out friendly. You need to start looking relaxed. You can make your points with your fingers or pointers or whatever you have, and sometimes you're thinking, okay? Here we have some more. You can look at them when you get a chance, I'm sure. It's not that hard. Conclusions are kind of the important part. So when we come to the conclusion part, that's when we can use our body language in a little bit different way. And now I want to show you the final part of my presentation. Now we're coming to the end, right? Where you take off your glasses. Now this is the part that matters the most, you see, right? Let's take off your time. Now I want to show you what really matters, you see? Right? So all of these things are the things you do then. You cannot do them in your presentation because if you do them over and over again, people think, why do you keep acting so crazy, right? You do it at the end to show the conclusion is coming. And I think that really helps. Okay? Signal the ending is coming. For another example, here's a simple example. Maybe when your presentation, you talk, I think Eric did this. You had like a notepad, remember? I think it was in, yeah, it was this presentation. One thing you have a note, or is it the last one? I so many presentations, I get confused. So you, would, you can have that. You can be saying, uh, oh, okay, point one, point two. And then at the end, the last part, then you say, now I want to show you the most important ending point, right? Or, or, or now we're coming to the end of the presentation, you see, put it away, right? So that's all part of this signal the end with your body language, it can be very helpful. We've kind of talked about tone and delivery, but I just want to say one more thing about tone and delivery. It's very important that your sentences do not all sound exactly the same, that every sentence you're just saying what you want to say. Rather, you need to say some things Louder, some things softer, some things faster, some things slower. To help your audience understand your vocabulary, to understand your sentences, to understand your main points. How do you give a smooth delivery? 
A smooth delivery is not an easy thing to do in a foreign language. It's very, very challenging. All I can say is try to relax, right? Try to relax. Try to look, <laughs> try to, this is kind of appear relaxed. I hope you can be relaxed <laughs> would be even better than appear relaxed, okay? How can you appear relaxed? How can you feel relaxed? I think the best way is that your information you really know well. That's the best way. If you take your information and you just memorize it the night before, it might not be enough time. And then you're just going to repeat, right? But if you know your information well, I think you'll feel more, much more relaxed, right? How about in the case of Apple? I felt you, you looked very relaxed in the middle of the presentation. I mean, right in the middle of the presentation. You look very relaxed. Yes. How did you look relaxed? Um, because the sentence is close to our life. We just pretend we are talking in the stage. So I said to Alice, it's just like our personal trainer, right? It's, <laughs> right. it's like sentence and right. have question to her right. and answer me. Right. Just like So you, the information you know. You're, you're talking, but you're talking about the product, but the product you understand. You understand the details of the product. You understand the features of the product. So you feel it's okay to talk about it, right? So you use the language you're able to, which could be simple English, but you feel relaxed because you understand the topic. That is how you appear relaxed. People who don't understand the topic, it's very hard for them to appear relaxed because they're trying to think of what did, I, what did I remember to say? What am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to do? Also, it's okay to pause or take a break in the middle if you get lost or confused. Right? You can stop. Take a breath. And then begin again. It's okay. People understand and they feel relaxed. It helps them feel relaxed when you feel relaxed. Even in the middle of a presentation, if you're feeling nervous, you can stop and, I'm feeling nervous. Okay, I'm better now. Okay, now it's okay. In fact, it helps your audience wake up and get their attention. So it's quite all right. That would be related to tempo. How do you keep your presentation moving forward? That's called the pacing or the tempo. Okay, I've kind of talked about this one already. I'm going to jump through there a bit. And I think we're towards the end of this one. Okay, we have a little bit more on the slides here. I think everyone's done quite good on this, so we're not going to cover too much. Very clear, simple, easy to follow colors, graphics and charts that have nice uh, keys to them, uh, easy to see where they're up and down. I really hate 3D graphics, 3D charts, very confusing, very hard to read. 2D is perfect, nice and clear. And that's it for this chapter. Okay, so what we'd like to do now is take a break, and then quickly we're going to come back and look at each group's presentation very quickly. This week was actually a big improvement.